Hello and welcome. This is the new video. Uh, we are analyzing the balance sheet in this uh, new video. And in the last video, we have already analyzed the income statement of uh, the Facebook stock. In this one, I will analyze a little bit uh, the Microsoft uh, balance sheet. And bef as you notice behind my screen, there is a the balance sheet it shows. Uh, basically the balance sheet has assets and liability and it shows the debt or the shareholders uh, equities of a company and a couple of other points so before I go drill down and one by one I really want to give you the broad picture of what balance sheet is is about and what are the components in there so I'll do some uh, whiteboarding uh, just a little bit little bit so at least you get some understanding and then we'll go into the Microsoft uh, uh, balance sheet uh, which using the Ma market watch website and then we we'll analyze the its uh, balance sheet and if you are interested in my earlier video you can go and uh, check later on on the income statement as well because income statement balance sheet and the cash flow statement these are the uh, the key financial statement which summarize uh, the company okay and uh, if last but not the least if you haven't subs if you're new to my channel and you haven't subscribed yet so I suggest kindly subscribe and press the like button so more and more people will uh, get an aware of that okay so here is uh, less theory and I more focus on this on the analytics as well okay so I'll show you some ratio and analyze the balance sheet and we'll go from there okay so let's get started so here there is a bl blank screen so basically if we want to summarize the in the equation let's let's see this equation right so we have this equation called asset oops a equals to l plus e everything in the balance sheet should be should summarize into this equation what is a a is nothing but the assets of a company okay L L is liability all its liability either the bonds or any short-term debt or any any kind of a debt if a company has it it's come under liability so this mean and the next is the equities equities are the shares right which company issues uh, to uh, bring more money so there are so if you can think from that perspective so these are the equities as well okay so if you see how if you see simply the assets the company gets the money either by raising the debt all right so this means asset can be increasing if the company increases liability which is debt right they raise the debt and get more loan for sure it get more cash and assets get uh, increase or otherwise they liquidate or bring uh, issue the shares and uh, get the more uh, equities okay either approach basically will increase the with increase the assets right but for so the main thing here if what management has to see what is the perfect ratio for the company right because issuing too much debt is also not good right or also di diluting the equities if suppose if you buy the shares and then if they issue more share this mean uh, this mean the per share values of the assets is is reduced as well so this is also reduced right and also when company issues more shares this mean they are unable to get the debt it's also sees uh, long term uh, it's also seem negative from that perspective think from this scenario right suppose you have your own business and and you believe in your business so why company uh, need uh, the money right to invest in a project so that they get net income or cash flow so if you are confident on your project or your cash flow then you don't have to worry about why you give uh, bring more partners you won't bring the partners right so you bring the debt maybe it has one person two person or ten percent eight percent right even if you have to give more but in the long term is good 
because you are not diluting you are not giving your shares right so so that's what from the equity perspective right initially is okay but bringing too much debt as well is is also bad right now you say okay why is bad because this implies that company is not enough to company assets are not enough to 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 generate uh, to bring the money and and generate so they are not self sufficient right if i am self sufficient then why i need the debt okay initially i need to grow and then grow by raising the debt uh, in the initial stage or maybe if i am doing the more project but what ratio of that debt right if for example if uh, i'm just giving some my hypothetical uh, example let's say if i i have a, a 10 billion dollar project right if i have a cash flow let's say uh, 4 billion right and then i invest i take 6 billion or let's say 6 billion debt that's okay because i i have some cash flow there i'm not going insane on this 10 billion because i don't have enough or maybe i'm not able to survive right or there is another possibility is there okay maybe 6 billion debt maybe is too much right so then the company think okay let's split it into let's say 3 billion of debt debt and another 3 3 sorry 3 billion uh, of equity right they diluted but it will increase the asset so we need to see from both angles how uh, this need to be done okay so that's the overall picture on the the on the this equation okay so now what i will do i will show you how this equation basically in uh, bring into the uh, uh, plot into the balance sheet okay i'll use one more whiteboard and then we'll go to the microsoft uh, uh, balance sheet okay okay so in earlier video i have shown you the the this equation right oops asset equals to liability plus equity right now let's say this is my balance sheet right maybe i should put it here right in balance sheet it has two sides uh, assets and then we have so sorry we have the left side which has the asset and on the right side we can have the liabilities and then we have this equities here okay so this mean if my and one more important point right because if th this is i think this is self explanatory if i have let's say 10 dollars here plus 10 dollars here so this mean it should be 20 dollar here so that is the balance right so this left side of the equation always balance to the right side okay so that how so the sum of these should be uh, should be this one more split into this one happen is these are the current assets okay current assets basically whose period is one year or less and then there are long term assets right lt assets okay which as the name suggests these are long so these assets will broken down high level into two components you will notice uh, in any balance sheet any company balance sheet you 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 will see you will find that these are the two breakdown there and also on the liabilities again this is the current liability sorry about my hand right but this is hard to write on this so and the second one is the long term liabilities okay and equities there is no time bound on equities right it's just issue the shares here right so that's here again any sum of these or these it should be balanced right if this is x any number this should be 3x here as well okay so this is i want to give some this background to ensure the framework is set right on your mind so now with this idea in cons uh, in mind this framework in mind now let's go and analyze uh, the the balance sheet of of a company okay so i'm on the uh, market uh, watch website this is uh, another good website which 
sh shows the financial statements. Here, I, ha I already went to the website and then this is the M MSFT, this is the ticker name of Microsoft and then this is the balance sheet, okay? So if I click on the balance sheet, it shows me, as you notice, its assets. You can go into the Yahoo Finance is, is, is the same, same story. But one good thing about this website is it shows some kind of uh, this uh, this uh, histogram as well, which easy to see. Okay, is this little bit mixed, whether it's increasing or decreasing, and it also has some ratios here. Okay, uh, but I don't like uh, their ratios; is not too too good, which uh, basically which we need to see on the balance sheet. Uh, but still, nevertheless, let's let's continue. Okay, so if you see on the high level, right? This is a, this these this okay. One more. These are the annual statements. So balance sheet is made on annually right so here we have from 2015 to 2019 so 2020 in december the microsoft will have its own uh, will publish the uh, its balance sheet again okay so we are looking into the annuals and these are uh, in the mil in these are in the millions okay so what they are saying, uh, their uh, fiscal year is June to July. Sorry, it's not December, but for Microsoft, it should be in July. So within a month or two, we'll see another, uh, the Microsoft balance sheet coming out. Okay, so let's say, so this, okay, so now we know these these figures. And B means the billions, of course, and M means millions. So we have here the assets, okay? And then if I go down, it stops here and then it's uh, it's basically showing in a page so that's why we have its a liability okay liability and sh shareholder equity as a one component and another page so whether they they put it vertically or you put it side by side in a table doesn't matter the matter is the the main thing is information okay what we are looking so now again the next thing is okay so we have two component which we find which we i have showed to you the next thing is let's say if they have a uh, short term or long so the total current assets implies the uh, the short term assets and then we have the total assets here mentioned and these are all the long term assets similarly on the liability side you notice these are the total current liabilities uh, all these and then we have long term debt and then these shows the total liabilities okay total liabilities include the short term liabilities or you can say the current liabilities and then we have the equity section here okay and now so again this is the okay so we focus on 2019 in 2019 is 286.56 billion uh, shareholder liabilities and equity and you will see in asset it should be uh, the same as well you see 286.56 uh, billion now let's go uh, record by record and see uh, what is there so in the current liability sections we'll most most of mostly we'll have the cash and short term these are most liquid investments so you see here so this is from left is the year is going and most recent year is 2019 here so you see the cash is growing as we can see in this trend as well and the short term investment is also going so it from 90 billion to 122 billion so it's grown a lot the next statement is so this is the cash pure cash and this is more like a very liquid kind of an investment one two three months that kind of a period right or maybe up to one year right so short term or the is or the total current one is up to one year okay so this is what sees within one and anything above that it comes under the long term total account receivable which basically what it's saying here it also gives the breakdown here uh, the account receivable uh, basically gross and any bad debt so basically account receivable means these are the sales made but they haven't received the money yet right and we notice that these are quite increasing which is not a good sign of a company this means they are making sale but they uh, they still need to receive this uh, money and okay so this is and next is the inventory maybe inventories again they are shown up more granularly okay which is finished ready to ship 
work in progress where basically they are still building raw material how much raw material they have seems like the raw material is keep decreasing if you see the trend here so this means they are not keeping a lot of raw material or maybe this other way implies that they are very efficiently using uh, making the finished good but if you notice here in 2015 they have 1.6 billion and here in 2019 is also 1.6 billion right but let's look at here the raw material holding is 1.1 billion here but here is only f almost 4 mil 100 million so this mean is very efficiently uh, the manage uh, the management is using the raw material or the cash right so they are not holding the cash uh, basically uh, a lot in just in uh, raw material okay so that's very one good thing to see here which i find so when we have this total so the total of all these is 122 in 2015 and we like this uh, number to be increasing okay again is going good so you see the trend 175 uh, uh, 0.55 billion now going to the long-term assets in the long-term asset for sure there is a property plant management again it's broken down by buildings land softwares and other and then the depreciations depreciation means uh, there is a life of the building or assets and every year the companies take some uh, uh, that uh, depreciate that uh, life of those uh, assets so this mean if it's a 10 year let's say the company is uh, 100 uh, let's say the asset value is 100,000 and the company is trying to depreciate 10,000 so this means in within 10 years it should be able to uh, have zero value basically after that amount right so that's what it implies hopefully i did the <laughs> math uh, correctly i think so yeah okay and then uh, this is the l some note receivable maybe they have they receiving some money they bought some notes and they receive some money on that intangible assets which mostly is has the goodwill and other intangible asset basically these are the what it's trying to show high level is trying to show if companies if this is stays the same this means it's the goodwill of this company but if it suddenly it jumps it's clearly reflect that maybe at this year or company bought uh, some another company right and microsoft maybe they bought i'm not sure if they bought linkedin in 2017 i'm still doing researching uh, i just uh, this company but they have maybe they bought something o overpriced right if something is hundred dollar and they, they paid let's say 120 so this means they can say okay hundred dollars for the asset and 20 it comes under the goodwill so it says okay the company is growing uh, increasing by the goodwill okay which we cannot see intangible the name suggests we cannot see that's why it says intangible assets right it's nothing like that you uh, if you if you bought the share give the, the debt to the company that you sell uh, that and recover your money right it's nothing like that okay so once you sum all these you get uh, will get the 286 so this are this is on the asset side now let's go on to the liability side in the liability side and again if i click on this one it shows the growth in the the ratio as well right here in this website shows this percentage so you see the assets are going by 10 percent then 30 percent and then suddenly it drops this year right which doesn't look right from 30 to 3 percent in 2018 but it go come back to uh to 10 percent right almost 11 percent 2019 the next year so that's why you see this this uh, spike and then come down as well and uh, if somebody is doing the research as a research on investment on the stock they need to see why as had suddenly dropped right it's not consistent so it was 10 and 30 so we can see okay something they bought so that's why it's increased but the next year is even not come to back to 10 percent it's further dropped okay so you see here it's one reason is from 45 to 43 right the the goodwill they is reduced and then next year is again 49 so something is going on there but overall it's increasing i just want to also show you when you analyze something how what are the things you look after okay the next one is the debt debt is the the short term again which is the immediate payable 
uh, in the short term debts so it seems like the short term debt is op op coming up going down so it's around 7 billion if i see 5 to 7 billion range it was pretty bad in 16 and 17 account payable is the we still need to pay uh, for uh, for these so that's uh, we have the we take so that's what's called account payable account payable from this mean you can think from uh, that companies using uh, this full cycle capability right if you get the service and you paid in advance uh, what's what's is the benefit right no benefit but if you have a time to pay like 30 days you pay at 30th days this means one month you can uh, get the interest on the money right so so it's, it's it's not bad from the company perspective that's what i i want to show here okay so this is the income tax payable which they need to pay wow it's too hot it's grown uh, a lot from 2017 to us 35 billion oh, is it looking right oh sorry yeah. no no i'm looking i wrong column okay so this one 12 to 70 and then oh wow it jumped to 200 212 billion and 5 billion in 19 so a lot of income tax payable is there so that's a little bit need to see what why it's growing why not they're paying their taxes right okay so if we need to analyze we need to analyze this when this is due right so they cannot just hold that taxes for long okay so this is the dividend payable the dividend consistently increasing so this is good for the shareholders because they'll get the money okay now this shows the total liability now the total liability is pretty much consistent from 40 60 and then drop back and go to 70 now so if I just want to st uh, stop here to now show you one of the important ratio which uh, especially on this uh, uh, coronavirus time or any time uh, which also important if we need to analyze the uh, the this uh, company's balance sheet what so one important thing we need to see okay how much current assets we have right if we have less this mean it should be a liquidity crisis right we, which we don't want that this mean the company need to uh, go back and get the money at the higher dollar if they don't have enough cash in hand or enough uh, assets short term assets okay so one thing is we can quickly check if this our current assets is higher than this or not so let's see in 2019 what is my current asset my current assets are oh wow it's way above 175.55 okay so let me bring my spreadsheet so if i say this 175.55 okay so this is the current assets and then we have so let's see what is my current liability which is 69.42 almost looks like more than double i think right 69.42 so if i divide the current assets by current liability which is 2.52 which is very good okay so this means company have enough assets uh, we i also calculate uh, uh, the some uh, other ratios but i won't focus here i want to go deep into uh, the each details so let's go to the another one another line so from the asset perspective looks good on the long term debt perspective let's say the 79 uh, long term debts is increasing so this means company is increasing by issuing more debt okay and then uh, okay and what is so these are different kind of debts is showing long term these are the leases uh, long-term debt excluding these so it's saying uh, these are not the leasing okay these are the convertible debt convertible debts what its name implies is maybe they have the debt but they have the option to take part in the equity right if the equity value is high then this debt can convert it to an equity so this implies that they don't have to pay this debt right instead they take the equity they dilute more shares okay so keep that in mind this is the capitalized lease obligations so which is increasing as well 
interesting so this means they have any lease maybe on building or anything okay these are the deferred taxes deferred taxes means the taxes which they have uh, they defer right they haven't paid yet so they take advantage of that okay so this is reducing okay this means it's okay and the other liabilities okay and then they have a deferred income maybe this is also important i'll cover deferred income is this means they get they haven't put, give the services but they receive the cash up front and if you notice this is keep increasing so this is a good sign as well that they have the the client which is paying them up front so they don't have any problem in getting the money from from them right and then all these short and long terms the total is 184.2 now if i see okay so this is then and then the total equity is only 102 uh, and then uh, including minority share then it's 286 okay and equities include the retained earning basically the net income part which is invested back into the into the the business right which is 224.15 maybe some part of the you know the profit goes to the dividend paying or paying paying of other uh, things uh, and then it comes here okay and uh, da, 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 and there is no minority share it's not showing here minority share means any I think uh, Microsoft also own LinkedIn. If any share that's not showing, it's not consolidated. Maybe it's only Microsoft, so that's why. But here it shows the 286.56 total. So here pretty much uh, the the assets and uh, the liabilities uh, of the companies. One thing we can also see. So if you can say the what how much is the if we have asset over equity right so let's say what percent of the, the asset equ equity right so if my liability if I want to so we need to ask like this kind of question and usually I ask this and show share in my uh, stock rec uh, recommendation video right so let's say the total liability right 184.23 billion right so 14.23 so these are the the things i'll do sorry i'll show it here so you know as well so 184.23 this is my total liability right and my total asset is and i basically also i did recently the facebook link nike uh, did a full video why i think is a buy for that one for show because of the strong fundamental and I went over the uh, all three income statement actually I go to the 10k MNA and other uh, things if you haven't watched that I suggest you watch that as well let's see those videos too okay so the total asset is 286 so if I go here and type 286 dot uh, five six billion okay so let's say what percentage of my assets is liability right if i do this one divide by this one is 64 percentage right so this is almost 64 percent so this implies and this is my liability percentage right and then my equity is percentages can I do like this one minus simply this should be I think yeah only 35.7 percent right right so and this mean is more more on the debt side on the Microsoft but Microsoft is a good company and uh, this means they are not diluting their share much so they are more growing by by taking more debt and investing we can think from that perspective okay and uh, that and also this is a technology service driven company right so we didn't see much in terms of uh, more assets and property this is only like a property plant and here okay so yeah so that's pretty much on the Microsoft uh, balance sheet and I uh, please if you like this video do subscribe to my channel and also share as much if you like it 
more and more it will go higher in the google algorithm and more and more people watch it and please give thumbs up if you uh, for this video and do share it thank you very much and uh, see you in uh, the next video and if you want you can browse my channel for some other video and uh, happy knowledge sharing okay thank you uh, bye for now